We made it to the top, fam. This is where everyone takes the iconic picture, but look how pretty this is. <laughs> Hello! It has been a hot minute. So I have been a little MIA here, which I have to apologize for. Life has been a little bit crazy, but if you've been following along on Instagram, you know that I recently went to Yosemite, which was amazing. Very busy because we went during peak season which makes sense but it was also very fun and amazing so let's chat about it how have you been what have you been up to um i'll catch you up on kind of some parts of my life but today i mostly wanted to talk about fueling during a hike and i know you're like wait you're just walking in nature why do you need to why do i need to eat we're gonna get to that. And we're gonna talk about Half Dome specifically because this was my first time ever hiking Half Dome, which was crazy and exhausting, but well worth it. And we're gonna talk about it. So let's get right into it. So for those that don't know, Half Dome is one of Yosemite's most iconic hikes. Yosemite is a national park in the US, in California and it's essentially this huge valley with mountains. It's really well known for um, its climbing scene as well. If you've watched the documentary Free Solo at all, you'll, know, you'll recognize El Capitan from Yosemite. And Half Dome is kind of one of the most iconic hikes where if you've seen any pictures at all and you've seen like the cables of people going up this like 50 degrees rock, that's what it is. We'll go through the hike and then also go through how I fueled for it. We started at 5.30 in the morning-ish, ish. Maybe it was a little bit earlier than that. Before I even started hiking, I ate a cliff bar. I did not record this, I'm very sorry. I was a little bit delirious at that time. I'm not the biggest morning person, so remembering to record was no, my top priority is mostly just like getting on the trail. But I started off already eating something and drinking some water. Two of the biggest things that we're gonna start right off the bat with feeling for a hike is making sure you have enough water. So, so important. The moment you start feeling dehydrated and getting really that like dry mouth, it's potentially a little bit too late. You wanna stay on top of your hydration game. Do not mess around with hydration. Second thing to note with hiking is kind of similar to the hydration, but you want to be eating pretty regularly while hiking, even if you don't feel super hungry because maybe the heat or if you're hiking in the snow or like the, t the climate might be affecting your hunger cues, but it's really important that you are regularly consuming food. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that might look like depending on the type of hike and uh, the climate and whatnot. So to give you kind of some reference, we're already starting off at 5.30. Our total round trip was about 18 miles for a half dome. So that's why it was incredibly so important that we were eating and drinking because that was essentially all three meals we would be out there. So we needed to make sure we were well stocked. So to start off, we had packed the night before. I think I packed four salami and mustard sandwiches. I packed, I think six clementines. I had like maybe three or four different, a variety of granola bars and protein bars. I'm not the biggest fan of those, but I knew like if I needed something just to nibble on, I could have that. My dad also brought like dehydrated fruit, which was really good. We had like dried bananas and strawberries. I will note, I'm. it's been probably almost two weeks exactly. It's been two weeks since I did this hike, so memory is a little bit foggy. Um, I'm also just really tired right now, so that might also play a part in it. But 
we brought that essentially in a ton of water. Oh, we also brought like liquid IV and noon tablets in case we needed some more of those electrolytes. So let's get back. That's kind of to give you a preface of what was all in our bag. Let's get back to the hike itself. So we start off at 5.30, we're scurrying our way up there. If you don't know anything about Half Dome, there are kind of two main trails that you can take. There's the Mist Trail and there's the John Muir Trail. Don't get mad at me if I said John Muir wrong. I don't know how to correctly say the M-U-I with the little dots R word. But we'll just say John Muir for now. So going up, the Mist Trail is shorter going back up and down, but it's very wet. The John Muir Trail is much longer, but you will not get wet. So we originally were gonna do the John Muir Trail up and down, cause we were like, we don't wanna get wet. We packed another pair of socks, but then we were like, oh, it might be really fun. So this is kind of what we did. It was so crazy cause there was just this waterfall right next to the trail and we were getting absolutely soaked. We were okay with this cause we knew that we were gonna dry off later cause we'd be like in the sun and outside for so long. So we were fine with that. And it got to the point that I tend to be like a chronic overheater in every situation, especially working out. So I was living my best life. So I was like down to like a t-shirt and shorts and I was loving it. We were getting soaked. It was so fun. The steps were really steep. So if you have any type of like knee problems or anything like that, I'd be pretty careful. You don't want to slip and get hurt. They're pretty intense. I don't know if you guys can see this path. So we went up the mist trail to start. It was super fun. Everyone was so, and at this point we kind of decided to chug along a little bit. And we got to one point where we were going for probably two and a half hours in, maybe two hours in. And the sun was out at this point. So we decided to switch socks. So we like sat down and we decided to eat our first big meal of the day. It is really important with hiking that you are consistently fueling your carb sources since you will be working out for extended periods of time, depending on the hike you do. This was a very intense hike. Uh, spoiler alert, it took us 14 hours. So a very intense hike, I would say not a normal hike for most people. But with hiking and how kind of the body's metabolism works is after about like an hour or so, your body starts pulling from more of those like fat stores and more of that like stored energy rather than that immediate glucose we can pull from that from food we just ate. So that's why it's really important with hiking that you're constantly eating because you're not gonna really feel your body pulling from those stores as much. But since you're consistently moving for long periods of time, you gotta at least supplement those carbs that are going pretty quickly. What I chose to eat was like the clementine, the sandwich, and the strawberries at this point. I think I forgot to record the strawberries. If you're gonna do this and you're gonna do the mist trail, pack extra socks. But at this point we decided to fuel up again because we're getting a little bit hungry and we knew we, were, we still had a long ways to go. So we sat down. It's okay to rest while you're hiking. There's no shame in it. Um, even if it doesn't feel like you're doing a super intense work, it, you gotta rest. Don't hurt your, don't risk injury by pushing ahead. Something I did, I forgot to record at any point, was I actually had a water bladder in my backpack. So what a water bladder is, you probably see at some point if like you've done any type of hiking, is where it's this huge container that has, I think about like three, four liters of water that you put in it it sits in a pocket in your backpack and has a tube that wraps around 
so you can like take little sips of water whenever you want. So I was constantly drinking water. Luckily, the Half Dome hike has a couple of bathrooms all throughout. If not, there's nature, which you can also utilize. Um, so do not worry about, I would not, I would not risk being dehydrated with the sense of not having an accessible bathroom. All throughout the hike, I was taking sips of water. Anytime we stopped, let someone pass. Anytime we like took any time break at any point, I was taking at least a couple sips of water because dehydration was not something I wanted to deal with at all. Even if it doesn't feel like you're profusely sweating, your body is utilizing that water and you gotta replenish it, especially when you're outside for extended periods of time. So we continue going on. We continue going up all throughout maybe every like hour or so we were kind of stopping and snacking um, i forgot to also record the like dried bananas and strawberries that we were eating throughout i know i got one recording at least when i remembered on the way down because i was like exhausted and just want to eat i'm like wait a second i gotta show you guys what i ate but i was eating it much, those much more frequently throughout one of my favorite parts so we're just gonna one of the cool, really cool things about Half Dome is it's decently gradual. It's at some points, some points. I felt like there was more gradual inclines than I anticipated. It starts off pretty intense, but then it's just kind of long. So that's why you gotta prepare for that endurance. It was also pretty wet. So making sure you're having multiple of those socks and probably like a raincoat or something like that would be helpful. Depending on the time of year as well, like if the waterfalls were really gushing this year, so that's why we were getting so wet, but maybe you go like in the fall, late fall when the waterfalls might not be gushing as much. I don't really know when they stop. Check the weather. Be aware of what's going on in the park before you go. One of the coolest parts of Half Dome, specifically the hike, was Sub Dome and Half Dome itself. So Sub Dome is like the big thing before Half Dome. Something you need to know about Half Dome is if you want to do the entire thing, you have to get a permit. As of right now, I believe two months before, they give out 70% of the permits. I think it's 300 permits per day, at least what the, that's what the ranger said most recently. So 70% are, are randomly distributed. You have to apply online. It's like a lottery system for them. And then up to like 48 hours, before the two days before you can also apply as well if you don't get into that lot that initial lottery also online the chance is a little bit lower because they're only distributing 30 percent of the permits so if you want to do the entire thing make sure you get a permit they will not allow you into the sub dome and half dome i believe this is just to like regulate how many people are up there because there's not a lot of space it's also we don't want to completely wear off wear out nature that would not be good because then there'd be nothing left so make sure you look into that sub dome was essentially just a bunch of steps and switchbacks it was pretty intensive but it was just a lot of like switchbacks and pretty steep steps half dome was very fun for me i enjoy life-threatening experiences and life-threatening hikes what does that say about me? We're not gonna get too much into it today because this is not therapy. The two things I will note with Half Dome, if you do plan to do it, are you need one, a pair of grippy, like really solid grip, non-slip hiking boots. I saw some people do it in gym shoes. I would not recommend doing it in gym shoes you're potentially like at like 50 degrees. If that's like the average degree up you're going. You do not want to be sliding. You will slide no matter what shoes you're wearing. I will know at some points you're going to slide just because of how steep it is. And you don't want, you want to minimize that sliding, you know? So get some good hiking boots. You do not want to be slipping off the rock. Second thing I'd recommend is getting gloves. I like, heard that half dome was majority like upper body that's why i like started climbing a lot more to prep for that and i was like oh my upper body is pretty fine like how much upper body can it be 
it's like 80, 85% upper body. Cause going up, you're just pulling yourself up. Like you're, you can't really walk. Your feet are not going, for, your feet are following you. You are pulling yourself up this rock for 400, 400 meters. And on the way down, you're holding. And the only way for you to stop is like you're walking down your little feet, you're walking down. And the only way for you to stop is to like clo close your hands. That's the only thing stopping you. And there are wood planks, but from what you can control, this is all that's stopping you. So just to give a reference, my hands are like, I feel like it doesn't capture it very well. They're getting pretty messed up right now. Um, I think it's just cause it's been a while and my calluses are breaking cause I haven't taken a break from physical activity cause it kind of wore me out from doing that much hiking and outdoor activity and just like activity in general. But get good gloves cause I don't want your hands to get ripped apart. They are literal lifesavers. I could not imagine doing that with just my hands. So get good shoes and get gloves. And it is not, they aren't just trying to scare you when they say you need to work on your upper body to do it. They are not, they're not kidding. You need to pull yourself up. And I don't say like pull yourself up, like a pull up, pull yourself up. Cause I can barely do that, but like, so Half Dome was so fun at the top. The views were amazing. It was super windy. There was snow up there still. So like, I definitely should have better to be like warmer but that's okay because it was worth it we got all the pics we wanted and the views were amazing like I said and yeah but before I forgot to know before we even did Half Dome I was like I'm not attempting this feeling fatigued at all so we like sat down we ate, I ate another clementine we ate some more food and then we did it so like all throughout, we're like checking in with each other. I hiked it with my sister and my dad. My sister didn't end up doing Half Dome. She's not the biggest fan of heights. So she ended up doing Clouds Rest, I believe. It's a different direction. It's like a thousand meters higher and it's four miles longer to the end and back. So quite intense. But all throughout, we were making sure that like we were eating even if like you didn't feel like you were eating, you just try to eat something. Even if it was like a clementine tends to be my go-to because it didn't really feel really heavy. And even if I wasn't super hungry, I could still at least get that in me pretty easily. So all throughout we were eating, it's incredibly, imp it's incredibly important just to continuously be eating. Like even if your hike's like four hours long, five hours long, bring something at least, something small. Like you could do trail mix or some fruit or you could do like beef jerky or granola bars or whatever it is you like. Biggest thing I always know is watching out for like, you know, a lot of people think of like string cheese or like cheese and crackers. I would just be cautious if like it's really warm outside. You don't want to accidentally give yourself food poisoning with any type of like dairy products or anything that needs to be refrigerated. If it's gonna be a short hike or if it's a little bit colder, they might be okay. Um, but I just wouldn't risk that. You don't, that's not something you wanna deal with later. But we are constantly checking in with each other, constantly drinking water and eating. The biggest thing I'll note with Half Dome that I wasn't mentally prepared for just cause I was so hyper-focused on the cables at the end when it's 400 meters of you pulling yourself up was the hike back. So you get down Half Dome, you get down Sub Dome, and we were doing John Muir Trail back because we didn't want to get wet because like it was fun getting wet there, but like we were in the sun and walking, so we dried off pretty easily. By the time we would have finished, it would have been dark and we didn't want to be cold in the dark. So we had, we got back to the bottom of the sub dome and something happens to me that doesn't happen too often, but when I know it happens, I know it's not great, is my like right leg starts uncontrollably shaking. Have you ever had it where like you worked out so intensely that a part of your body starts shaking? 
and you can't control it. It's literally like, so yeah, it happened to my right leg and I was like, oh my gosh, we have like nine more miles and my right leg is not the most reliable and stable right now. It was pretty tough, I will note going back, cause like my mom had told me that she'd heard that like the adrenaline of a half dome gets you up to the top and down and then like the adrenaline stops. And I think that happened to me where I was just like so excited to go up and I got down and then everything kind of caught up with me and my body was feeling it. Whereas like I would, I had to take it pretty slow where like my right leg would just give out randomly. Um, so that wasn't good. We had hiking poles, I forgot to note that. So the hiking poles sometimes helped. I still am not sold on hiking poles. I know they can help you, but some, I feel like I don't do them right. Or they just kind of get a little bit of anno a little bit annoying. Sometimes, I don't know, the verdict is still out from my, at least from my standpoint. We had nine miles back and even then we were like starting to get tired and we were like, okay, let's eat again. And we were like eating sandwiches every couple hours. We're eating clementines and dried fruit quite frequently. We were trying to eat bars. I tried to eat a couple bars, but I don't know. I'm really, I'm really picky when it comes to bars. We made it though. It was long, it was 14 hours. Um, I think the people on all trails are so speedy on there. I like to, I feel like, I don't know. I like to think of myself as not like a novice hiker, but then you see some of those times on all trails and you're like, but also comparison is a thief of joy. And we all went the same distance and saw the same sight, so. It doesn't matter, it does not matter. But I'm telling you, you if you take 14 hours on Half Dome, same, you're not alone. That was kind of Half Dome. I don't really know, I did not record a lot, honestly, on the walk back. I was just trying to keep myself alive and getting back home to our lodge because it was long. Nine, nine miles is a long time when you're not feeling your best. One of the most important things, even when you start to feel tired, you start to like feel exhausted, you gotta still eat because that's a long time to be moving. And that's a lot of energy your body is utilizing. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you got to replenish yourself. I actually like really also like if, if you don't want to bring anything I mentioned, you don't have to. It's really mostly like simple carbs you gotta have for like easy energy. Like I started really not feeling great at the end. I think it was a mixture of me not eating enough because I did not eat enough at the end. And I had to pee really badly because I had only peed once that day and I was drinking a lot of water. <laughs> So once I peed and ate, I was feeling good, but I was like, I, my sister was like, eat a clementine and that made the world of a difference. So like simple carbs could be like fruit, crackers, if you like candy, like Swedish, like Swedish fish, uh, Sour Patch Kids, those are simple carbs. Like anything that's like, will be digested pretty quickly to give you that quick energy. It's not a bad thing to have any of those, like they, in my case, like probably eating, I ate a clementine, I know it helps a lot, but like anything like that, just to get yourself some quick energy, like you do not realize it sometimes how much it creeps up on you that you need energy. So in those instances, instances it's nice. The sandwiches were nice from like a complex carb standpoint. They were giving me some protein, some fat for more like sustainable energy, also helping me like my muscle tissue is getting broken down so I'd replenish the muscle stores it wasn't like a quick action but you know we're working toward that we're trying to be we're trying to be preventative that's what a lot of it is and there is a tricky balance of like packing too much but like packing enough I felt that we packed enough we have pretty nice backpacks from REI shadow REI that I like really love because they have sit really nicely on your hips and your shoulders. So like 
I couldn't feel, it doesn't feel like anything's on your back, which is crazy to me that they designed something like that. Making sure that you have enough is very important. You can redistribute the weight throughout the people you're with. Um, if you're hiking by yourself, you'll probably just be carrying a little bit less because you're only, only one person's eating. That's kind of how do you feel for a hike? I think the biggest thing is honestly just like getting like, I would say more shelf stable items. Um, I know I brought salami, so that wasn't the most shelf stable, but it was, it was fine. I'm alive. <laughs> Bring like items that would be okay in whatever temperature climate you're going out in and making sure you're plenty, having plenty of water. Uh, we also had a water bottle or like a big one that was designated to electrolytes. So like we put a noon tablet or a liquid IV, I don't remember which one it was in that first just some like electrolytes to replenish those as we hiked. Even though like you might not view hiking as this like intensive activity, it's not like lifting weights or like running or swimming or yoga or like whatever it is, but it's still getting your heart rate up. It's still physical activity and you gotta make sure you take care of yourself because the last thing you want is like getting really dehydrated or passing out or something happens to you and it could have been prevented with have like eating more or drinking more water. And I think the last, the fun part, um, this is kind of a pet peeve I have with Yosemite. I don't think it's Yosemite specifically. I think I want to say the national parks, but I know it's not the national parks. Well, maybe it is. I don't know much about their system, so I could be wrong. The funding into national parks, I have a lot of beef with, but that's a tale for another time. Um, all the restaurants in Yosemite like close by like 5.36. And a lot of people eat dinner after that, especially if you're like hiking throughout the day. We like missed out on so many restaurants. There was, I think there's like four. <laughs> We missed out multiple times because we missed, like they were closed so early and I was like, oh my gosh. So like we got done at 7.30 at night. Nothing was open. Thankfully, my mom picked us up food and this was my victory meal. It was some nice butternut squash soup and there was this chicken sandwich. I was a little scared of the chicken. The avocado mash on it was really good and I think I also ended up eating this like little like souffle that we somehow managed to cook without having a microwave. Perks of having a STEM major family innovation runs through these veins. So that was Yosemite. That's how to feel for a hike. We also have an entire The Upbeat Dietitians episode on fueling for hikes. I will. I'll include it in the bio if you'd like to listen to it. It's really great. One of our hiking diet, one of my hiking dietitian friends comes on, which is super fun. We love that. Go check it out if you'd like to hear a little bit more. And yeah, let me know if you've been to Yosemite. Let me know if you've done Half Dome. Uh, let me know what new life-threatening hike I should do because now this was like the big one I was excited for for a couple years. And now I'm a little bit stumped i'm sure we'll find something the last one was angels landing that was very fun this definitely tops that but let me know i'm excited also hoping to be back on here a little bit more consistently it's been pretty busy i'm trying to prioritize this a little bit better and be there for you guys so i appreciate your patience i'll catch you next time otherwise take care of yourself All right, that's enough. It's been a while since I've recorded this. I, do. I don't know how to act. All right, bye. <laughs>